So here I'm going to do a test of uh, an interpretation of the or a Masikas thruster, which is um, the idea is that this is well, this is superconducting wire, and so with the superconductors, uh, you get I believe it's something I believe it has to do with the Meissner effect. That was my understanding, but because of the tapering here, it creates some sort of a an uneven field. And the idea is that this thing will self-propel itself. Um, but I don't know how much current it requires. Um, so my power supply is good up to 10 amps. So once I get this superconducting, it'll be handling up to 10 amps. And then um, I'm just going to place it in this container which I made. Which is just a plastic container with a bunch of pipe wrapping around it and uh, so some makeshift insulation to contain the liquid nitrogen and I'm going to put it on the scale here and see if anything changes and what I'll do right now is a just a, a test of the, uh, the coil as it is at room temperature I'll run some current through it so we can see if it messes with the scale at all. I can get up to about six amps through it at room temperature. It gets pretty hot here, so um so the resolution on this scale is plus or minus one gram, which is not great, but uh should provide some sort of reading if anything's going to go on here so I'm going to crank this up here to uh, six amps that's about as much as it'll do and then down again up and down has no effect on here as you can see and next step is to cool this thing down Okay. Time for baptism. It might change just a little bit because the nitrogen's evaporating, but that should be at a pretty uh, gentle rate. Okay. So this is my first time doing this kind of thing, so I have to apologize if I'm not that smooth here. Let's turn it up. Three amps, four amps, seven amps, saying uh, 75 watts. Minus four grams on the scale. Minus six. I'm gonna add some more nitrogen here. Okay, so the cone is now completely immersed in the nitrogen. So that's probably about the rate that it's evaporating. Let's zero that out again. Let's try this one more time. Four amps, five amps, seven amps, eight amps, ten amps, sixty-eight watts. Yeah, I didn't see any uh, thrust here on the scale. Try one more time. Ten amps, nothing on the scale. And of course, it's going to boil the nitrogen a little faster because it heats up there. Just want to show you the inside here. 
and you can see hopefully it bubbling away just for the sake of being thorough I will uh, do a test here a magnetic field test so I'm just gonna hook it up to my DC power supply again I'm just gonna put it at the bottom here I think that's close enough because I don't want to obviously stick my hands in there 10 amps 2.2 millitesla coming out of the bottom here pretty close to the top 4.5 4.5 uh, millitesla is what I was getting there for a moment okay so I've now hooked this up to uh, the output of an audio amplifier which is fed to fed from my signal generator here which is producing a transient waveform so I'm going to try that see right there okay let's reset this Nothing there in terms of change of weight or thrust that I'm seeing. Um, that's at uh, 10 kilohertz. Let's try uh, lower frequency here. Let's try 10 hertz. Okay, nothing there. It's at, I don't know, half volume here on the amplifier, so I don't want to burn it out. Um, so there's just different uh, waveforms here. I will show. And I will be looking at the scale here. It's another transient waveform, logarithmic negative logarithmic this is a uh, 10 10 Hertz um, another logarithmic one these are just positive sine wave pulses and these are negative ones and that's just a half wave rectified. Um, that is a Lorentz something. It's got a peak in the middle. These are just ones with noise. There's a trapezoidal waveform. Pulse, impulses, AM, AM waveform, an FM waveform, a chirp waveform, plain sinusoid, uh, uh, triangular ramp another transient another transient I'll try just going to a higher frequency here. Let's try 110 hertz.
200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 900, 1 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, let's see here, let's go through some different waveforms again. Oh, minus 0 0.001 there. Could be this is probably something else. DC. Sign, square wave, CMOS, just a digital signal. Ramp, transient, negative, exponential, positive falling exponential negative falling exponential 1 kilohertz again nothing impulses I might expect something with impulses but AM, nothing. Let's go down to uh, one hertz. One hertz. Nothing here, guys. I'm not seeing anything. This is a 20 watt amplifier. It might be one of those things where it takes like a uh, hundred amps or a thousand amps to see anything. I don't know. Well, here's another test. I flipped it so the top is pointing to the sky. Here we go. I'm thinking the coaxial cable is actually generating the torque. So here's the cone coil, hollow, single layer, attached to the coaxial power feed cable up to the top, back down to the bottom, there's a power supply. So, the strange same thing is uh, happening, watch when we give it power. A very apparent rotation. And it just kind of keeps slowly rotating farther and farther as I leave it connected up until the point where the t wire tension keeps it from moving more. But, again, the strange part is this. It's not magnetic field interaction because, now we just flip the polarity and watch again. So, why? What's going on over here, Princess Leia? It is a refrigeration <laughs> experiment. We are freezing these produce with liquid nitrogen. Well, that's fine and dandy. But remember, in space, no one can hear you scream. Let me tell you something! Let's just say you're getting ready to freeze some veggies. And you mistake your hand for a stock of celery. 
go to Hank. Your autograph picture of Chewbacca. And the next thing you know, 